Welcome into the Lord's house. We're happy that the uh, Lord uh, brought you safely here today. And uh, as we worship together, we uh, ask the Lord's blessings be upon you as we gather today. If you are a first-time uh, guest or visitor to Good Shepherd, we welcome you in Christ's name. And pray the Lord's blessings be upon you as we worship. Our order of service will be the Divine Service, study number 3. That's on page 184 in the front portion of your hymnal. Please note that uh, today begins uh, the first Sunday in Lent, and uh, Lent began with Ash Wednesday, and so because of that, a couple of parts of our service, specifically the uh, Gloria and Excelsis, and then also uh, in between the Epistle and Gospel, there's a couple parts of our service that we omit uh, uh, during this penitential season of Lent. So we welcome you in Christ's name. We sing our opening hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, 656, and we stand on the last verse.
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me for O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temper on the eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this year confession, I, by virtue of my office as a call and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro it has printed in your, in your worship folder. This morning, Psalm 91, the congregational tune is, Go to Dark Gethsemane. Those who go to the Lord for safety, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. you with his pinions, and you will find refuge under his wing. His faithfulness will protect and defend you. Not, not the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Not the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor the sickness that lays waste at midday. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high habitation, no evil shall befall you. No plague come near your dwelling. You will tread on the lion and adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life I will satisfy them and show them my salvation.
pray. O oh Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Lent is from Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verses 1 through 11, and is printed on the back of your service folder. When you come into the land that the Lord your God has given you for an inheritance, and have taken possession of it, and live in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God has given you, and you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number, and there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid on us hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house you and the, and the Levite, and the sojourner who is among you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. reading also on the back of your worship folder from Romans 10, 8b through 13, and we will read the verses... Together. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no, dis no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Will you please rise for our holy gospel. Holy gospel is recorded in St. Luke, the fourth chapter. will be our sermon text for this morning. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, 
To you I will give all of this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command His angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, and it said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the Gospel of the Lord. together. Let me use the car, 
I'll put gas in it. If you don't give me back my ball, I'm going to pound you. If the weather is bad and I can't go fishing or golfing or to my kids' ball game, I'll be in church. If you love me, I will give you what you want. If you can't be good, then you are going to bed. Now these are all each conditional statements. Each sentence has a promise result if the desired activity is done or not done. But you see, the big if might get us into trouble, like cheating on a test, having sex before marriage, or playing games with our eternal welfare. Today the devil comes to Jesus with some conditional sentences. Let's see how our Savior deals with the big if. Now the first devil can try if sentence is this. If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Oh, so clever, well played, Beelzebub. Jesus hasn't eaten in 40 days. And notice the question, if you are the Son of God. If he doesn't do what Satan says, then he must not be the Son of God. God. And if he does what Satan asks, he'll be obeying the devil. Satan wants Jesus to distrust his Father and do the will of Satan. Have you ever been tempted like this? Either way, you look bad in the eyes of someone. If you do what your friends ask, your parents might be angry. If you don't do what your friends want, then you look bad in their eyes. Oh, oh that crafty Lucifer. Remember, he's had practice since the Garden of Eden. He wants you to doubt the goodness of God. Satan now comes to Jesus with more ammunition. To you I will give all authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me. And I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Now Jesus must worship Satan to receive this. But what a crock of lies. Satan has no power to give the kingdoms of the world. The Lord as creator has the world in his hands. What a liar this guy. I mean, he lied to Adam and Eve that they'd be like God. How's that been going for the last 4,000 years? He promised Judas 30 pieces of silver. And he was so happy with his gift, gift that he went out and he hung himself. The deception never works. Satan may tempt us to think that if we work long enough and hard enough, we will succeed and get all of the things in the world that the world wants. And this if sentence might be true, but at what price? Your marriage? Your children? Your faith? Satan wants you to be envious. He wants you to be envious of others. He wants your eyes removed from Christ and on the earthly goods that others have. But we fight back with the word of God. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. The last temptation has Satan telling Jesus to throw himself down from the pinnacle of the temple because the Lord's angels will protect him. This battling blow quotes scripture except he leaves a few parts out. He twists it to fit his thinking. Satan wants Jesus to think that no matter what he does, he will be saved. Do you ever get caught with this one? Don't take your medicine. It won't hurt you. Join the party crowd. After all, what can really happen? I don't need I don't need to worship every Sunday. I was baptized and confirmed. I must be God's child, right? The devil wants you thinking wrong is right. After all, you are forgiven, right? Sin boldly. Not so fast, my friend. Sin does matter to God. Sin does matter to society and the direction we are going. 
and sin does matter to your eternal destination. The prince of darkness loses. None of this worked on the king of kings. Jesus won. And even as we lose our battles with our arch enemy, we know that Jesus defeated this pompous imposter. Listen to Romans 5.19. Through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. So, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. At the cross, Jesus said the one word that takes the pain of our temptation away, finished. Right then and there, the devil was done. He still had his power, but it is limited. Jesus stands in the ring with his hands held high. These same hands were nailed and bled for our salvation. The obedient Christ did the will of the Father as he was crucified and died and rose again. He lives. We never tire of the Lenten story because it is our story. Because he lives, we live forever. In the blessed home of heaven, Jesus triumphs over Satan. You see, Jesus used scripture to overcome these powerful if temptations. We, too, rely on the Word of God when we are tempted by the big ifs. We thank Jesus for His unconditional love that has saved us. And that's no big if. That's a promise from our Savior. Amen.
We also, Lord, continue to pray for Sherry Parker's brother, who has, un who has undergone his second surgery, and we pray it would have its desired effect. And in the days and weeks ahead, improvement would be seen. We thank you, Lord, for these and the other things we ask. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for our just justice system in our country, especially with the death of Justice Scalia. Please remind us, Lord, of your divine providence that no matter what happens, you have the world in your hands. Right where you want things, even when we don't understand them. As the political process plays out, Lord, we ask for your direction and guidance. Lord, let us pray to the Lord. For our armed forces and for all who work for our protection, that God would shelter them from harm and give them courage and wisdom for their daily work. Let us pray to the Lord. For our marriages and families, that our Father would heal good relationships, strengthen healthy relationships, renew our love for each other with his love for us, and use us to encourage each other in faith and life. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray all this through Christ, our Savior and Lord, in his name. Amen. Our worship continues now at the top of page 194 with the preface, the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing, praising you and singing,
husband in the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
from anybody? If not, go in peace. Have a blessed week.